Hi, I'm Barbara Fox, and today I wanted to talk about how much throughput you can get through the network. Let's say that we have a 10 gigabit link. We want to know how much traffic we can get over that link. Let's say we just had a simple link running back to back with our traffic generator, a 10 gig link. If we were sending 64 byte packets, we would get 7.6 bytes of traffic through. And the reason that is, is because between every frame, there's an interframe gap in Ethernet, and that helps the chip to align the packets. So if instead of having a 64 byte packet, if we had a 512 byte packet, we would get 9.6 gig of traffic through. And if we had a 1024, we would get 9.8 gig of traffic through. And if we had a 9,000, we would be able to use almost a whole link. And that's because the bigger the frame size is, the fewer interframe gaps there are because there are fewer frames. So the bandwidth gets much lower. Now, say instead of having simple ethernet traffic passing over this link, say we had an MPLS network in between. Now we have to take into consideration the overhead of the MPLS network. Say we wanted to send pseudo wire traffic over this MPLS network. That means on the links between the different routers in the MPLS network, we would have layer two headers, a pseudo wire he header, say we had a segment routing label and a control word label. Now our 64 byte packet has, is 110 bytes. It's got a lot of overhead in it. And now we're only getting 5.8 gig of traffic through on our test. So if you're not getting as much throughput through as you assume, it may be because of the overhead in your network itself. The way that we determine how much traffic you can get through is by taking the link speed and multiplying it by the frame size divided by the frame size plus the overhead. So that's the algorithm that we use to determine how much traffic you can get through. So another thing that we need to look at is, say we're giving CIR to our customers. So say we wanna give them 100 megabits of CIR, and we wanna determine really how we have to set up our devices in order to support that 100 megabits of CIR. Again, if we were just going back to back, there's no overhead, right? Because you're only counting the, the frames, so we don't even need the interframe gap. So if we were running back to back, there would be no overhead. So let's say we just have no overhead at all. Okay, at a 512 byte packet, we're still getting 100 meg through. At a 64 byte packet, we're still getting 100 meg through because there's no overhead. But again, let's say that we have an MPLS network in between. So now, again, let's say that we have a layer two header. We've got our pseudo wire header, our segment routing label, and our control word. Now we have 90 bytes of traffic on a 64 byte packet. So instead of giving 100 meg of CIR here, we actually need to set our device up to give them 140 meg of CIR to be able to get 100 meg through our network, through our MPLS network. And again, if we had, instead of a 64 byte packet, if our SLA was written for a 512 byte packet, we'd really only need, need to change the CIR to 105. The algorithm or the equation that you need for this is that the CIR equals the CIR times the frame size plus the overhead over the frame size, okay? Just something to keep in mind when you're looking at your throughput and setting your CIRs. All right, thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.